Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, we are fully engaged into the summer and it's an exciting time of the year as many of us, and I hope you are, getting geared up for the fall and what we have in store for us, being prepared for year end. Uh, for some of you, the fall may involve events and activities. Definitely as you plan for year end and then move into the spring, uh, you're thinking about another set of, act, of events and activities and strategies for your fundraising nonprofit efforts. And so I'm excited to be able to address issues related to events for the fall and year end and again also for the spring events and activities you have. So it's always nice to be able to be here. If you aren't a subscriber already, we would love to have you subscribe to this channel and be a part of this ever-growing community of faithful, nonprofit leaders who are making a difference in our world. Well, let's dive right into our question of the week. And it is really related a lot to events and the strategies we have. Our question of the week is from Amy in Westminster, Maryland. And Amy asks, in light of rising food costs, my May event cost me 1,000 more this year for 100 people than last. What are you recommending for fall events? Smaller fare, same program, food prices have continued to jump even as we speak. Thanks for your insight. Well, Amy, thank you for your question. I appreciate that. And I know that for you and for so many nonprofits, uh, it's, it's important, especially if you don't charge for your event, if you don't sell tickets and tables, uh, which I, by the way, recommend. Uh, it's really important that you keep your costs as low as possible, still providing a great um, program, a great meal, a great event for people, uh, one with excellence, but trying to keep the cost to a minimum. And I know it's so important, and I know, uh, Amy, in particular for your event, you don't don't charge you follow our strategy to the letter and uh, that always works well for you I know that well I'll tell you Amy I am I've really been hit myself uh, with the reality of rising food costs and the reality of trying to book events in this environment and it has not been easy I have uh, had some venues that have talked to me about five dollar increases some ten dollar a plate increases I even had one recently that reached out that was a fifteen dollar uh, per plate increase from last year which is just unbelievable and I've tried to work through a lot of options in fact I had an event uh, that I was negotiating recently that they wouldn't even lock in a price uh, just as a reminder to especially our regular viewers and if you aren't a regular viewer uh, you may not have heard me say this but I don't sign any contract until I've negotiated the price because once you sign you lose that negotiating strength they really don't have any incentive to help you out and to give you the best price possible but this particular event just would not budge to give me a price and in fact I even tried the option of putting it out there would you agree to not increase more than 5%, which to me seemed like a really reasonable amount because 5% of what we were paying was still a good amount and they wouldn't budge. And I even said to them, well, you know, what, what percentage increase would you be willing to agree with? I thought maybe they'd go to 10. They weren't willing to give me any price at all, which is very scary because that really, me signing the document really meant that they could essentially charge us anything they wanted to charge, which was very much like giving them a blank check, which is, was, is extremely scary. Uh, I wouldn't venture into that, unfortunately, in this particular venue. Uh, this property was the only one that could really help us. We were locked in, had to, do, had to go with it. Uh, but from their end, they are real skittish because uh, food prices are going up so fast. And of course, the cost of having to staff is, uh, is high and is expensive for them as well too. So this is not an easy time. Now what I am recommending, and Amy, I'm recommending it for you as well too. I would say in this season, get in at the lowest price possible. Now what that means is that you, will, you may need 
to for this time period and that's typically either fall of 2022 spring of 2023 or fall of 2023 for this season you may have to accept an inferior product to get at least a price from your property now what that means is that i normally would recommend a beef menu a beef entree for your event this might mean that you would have to settle for a chicken or another entree a pork that might be at a lower amount because if there's one thing i've learned in 38 years of doing contracts and negotiating venues i have never once had a property come back to me and say jim i've got great news for you uh the beef prices went down so we're going to charge you less once you sign a contract and once they get you paying a price that price will never go down and and so i've never had them come back and say you paid 30 dollars a plate last time beef prices went down we're only going to charge you 28 for the same price once they know and they have you in a habit of paying they're not going to reduce and so you want to get in as low as you possibly can so that when the prices start to come back you are locked in at the lower amount not at the higher amount and so when they do and this will pass it's it, there's no telling how long it will be but this will pass but when you at least get in you've got your event locked in you're locked in at a lower price you can always upgrade your meal but you at least you are in the door with that i wouldn't change your event at all i wouldn't switch from entrees to a dessert only or from entree to appetizers only that's not the way to go you've got to stay with the program and stay with those options that that go along with our normal plan i am not seeing any reason whatsoever to alter the model alter our strategy alter our program at all just simply getting in as early as inexpensively as you possibly can uh, people are starting to give more which hopefully will make that up and so that's where i would recommend us go for this time and for this season so amy i hope that answered your question and i hope that helped and for those of you who've got similar questions uh please reach out to me at DevF Strats and use the hashtag Jim and Java on Twitter. Uh, reach out to me like Amy did uh, at, with an email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com or follow us on Instagram, Dev Effectiveness Strategies, or in our in, on Facebook in our Development Effectiveness Strategies Facebook group, and I'll be listing and posting information like that. So I hope that helped. If you're not a subscriber, we would love to have you as on a, as a subscriber. Uh, this broadcast this youtube channel grows and gets out to more people as a result of how many subscribers we have so please if you haven't subscribed please do so today and as i always say we are here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded thanks a lot see you in the next video